All right, folks, uh, all of us here, if we really want to be honest, we're here because a man and a woman got together and had sex. Uh, and it is a topic that folk, frankly, are deadly afraid to discuss. It's amazing how in the conversation you can have with people say, we're going to be on uh, but we're gonna be quiet about it. Uh, my guest right now is Dr. Rachel. Uh, she's a sexologist. She is an actual doctor. Uh, and uh, she makes it clear that sex is about science. How you doing, Doc? What's hey, happening? Hey, good. What's going on, Roland? All good? All good? Fantastic. Listen. I don't know if you all know out there, this is black owned. This is fabulous. <laughs> this is what's it. up. You appreciate know? it. Appreciate it. We spend it. so much time on other people's networks and doing other people's things. And this right here, this is this is the holy grail. This is what's up. I appreciate it. So thanks appreciate for having it. me. Let's talk about that. Because yeah. look, you've done radio, yeah. uh, you were on the doctors, yeah. you've been on many other shows. Yeah. Uh, and and everybody obviously is always always focusing on, you know, these other different platforms or whatever. Whatever, but when it comes to this issue, you actually said, you know what? Let me just take this thing to a whole next level. I Man, I can remember us yeah. meeting at Weber Grill yeah. uh, in Chicago, State and Grand, right across from where I live. That's right. We're talking about okay, what you were trying to do, and mm -hmm. uh, and now it's morphed into something that's just much larger. When, when did you make that decision? That yeah. you know what? This thing is bigger than even what I think it is. Mm -hmm. So let's actually. Go there. Let's go there. So, you, you know, first, thanks for taking me back there. Because, you know, you've always been very supportive. You've always given such good advice. You know, you've always just been a beacon of light as to what to do. And I think when we think about television, and yeah, I was on The Doctors for four seasons, and you were on CNN for a bunch of seasons. And, Six years, yeah. And when you got off CNN, I'm sure you had family members like, we miss you on CNN. When I got off the doctors, they were like, we miss you on the doctors. And I, I think as, as a people, we have to look past popular media and look for ways like what you're doing and what, what I'm doing, you know, it's pales in comparison to what you're doing, sir, but to, to actually get the message to the people that needs to be there. And for me, sex and relationships really started in college. You know, I went to Freak Nick one year and I was at Vanderbilt and my best friend was down at Spelman and I got down there and I said, well, damn. <laughs> I said, if this is how things are rolling in our community, we're going to have a trouble with HIV because at that time it was kind of a gay man's thing. Mm -hmm. And so I was seeing people having sex in the car, in the street, on top of the car. I said, well, shit. <laughs> I was, so it opened up a whole new... So this new documentary, you're like, yeah, uh, I, I, I saw, you like, yeah. I experienced it in real time. Yes, for sure. And it was like sensory overload. I was like, okay, you know, I'm coming from Gary, Indiana, and I'm like, what in the world's happening? So I realized that sex was a, such a thing in our community that it was always going to be a thing. And so for me, it started with HIV and AIDS education. And then now being an, an adult and being married and having kids, it has morphed into this space where I see black sexuality and black sexual health and black health in general assaulted on a daily basis. I mean, you know, we have hypertension, diabetes, we die during pregnancy, you know, we got this prostate thing going. And for me, it is about, and it has been for a really long time, is how can I package the information and get the information out there in a way that people can understand, right. but also so that it changes the way we're doing things, so that it makes us healthier, lives ha live happier lives, and to keep the sexual connection together between people. Because we're living, I mean, the reality is we are, we're living in a world where it's everywhere. I mean, it, it's, it's on it's it on is. shows, it's in movies. It is. Uh, the, the music is far more sexually charged today than it than it's ever been. And, and then there's this impression in people's minds mm -hmm. that, uh, oh my goodness, that sex is amazing, is wonderful, but the bottom line is, as you deal with it, there are people who are having significant it issues with intimacy, yes. with actually having sex, men and women. For sure, for sure. And I think when we connect sexuality, I mean, you, you have to connect sex to everything, right? It's the reason you go out and get the new Jordans. It's the reason you get a haircut. You know, like the reason you look good is so much around sexual en energy. And I think as a, as, a, as a people, we're so afraid of sex and we're so afraid to talk about it that it becomes kind of like the elephant in the room. We're all doing it. We've all done it. 
We've all had it. We all had to have it to get here. So to take it and make it fun, make it entertaining, make it something that's not creating this weird energy has really been what it's about. And for me, I've been in this space, you know, I, I've, I've done teens, I've done women, I've done men. And really what I've found is that men are the, 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 the you know, they're the leaders, they're, well, they're supposed to be the leaders of the community, right? They're supposed to be the leaders of the household, right? And what I find is that when a man gets to the point where his erection isn't working anymore, it becomes a big thing for him. And it is a saddest thing to I mean, see I mean, a, a gentleman. Meaning it affects It affects everything. It affects him mentally, it affects in terms of how he how how his partner sees him, how he sees himself in the world, how he uh, presents himself. So for me, realizing that I love black men, you know, the, the, you know, they're an extension of me. They're a part of me, my dad, my brothers, and things like that. And so watching and seeing stuff like that happen in your own family makes you be like, oh, shit. You know, let me get on it. And really, honestly, my dad's, he was a physician too. And kind of towards his last few years of life, you know, he just became honest with me about some of the stuff that he'd been going through with his prostate, with his erections, talking to my mom. And I said, listen, if I can prevent anybody else from going through all mm -hmm. this, that is exactly what my mission has been. And so in the media space, I've been kind of all over the place, but now I have drilled down right. into men's health because... When your erection goes south, I feel like it's it's kind of like an SOS signal. It is letting you know that something else is going on, and what we need to do is fix the underlying right. cause so that the erections can stand tall. And so know? here's what was interesting. We were talking one day, and and you said that, um, which is very which I which I was actually surprised by. You said that when you've had these counseling sessions, you've gotten more resistance from from the women and not the men. For sure. Now, I was surprised by that because, again, the assumptions that we always hear is that, oh, no, men, they, 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 look, they don't want any advice. They know what they're doing. They don't want to listen to anybody. You know, it's all about ego. Yeah. But you said, no, it's the women who gave you the most pushback, and, uh, and the dudes were like, yo, uh... <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Let's figure this thing out. Definitely. From, from my family practice in Gary, Indiana, to practicing in L.A., to practicing in the prison system, men are much more, you know, and, and maybe it's because women are taking care of so many people. They're taking care of the husband. They're taking care of their kids. They're, so they're really not as invested in themselves as men are. But men, when you tell them, listen, it's not going to work anymore if we don't fix this. If you, if you don't get your sugar under control, you are going to have trouble with your erections. When, when you guide gentlemen in the direction to heal and to get better and to feel better and look better, they are really all about it. So for me, it became about, wow, I'm leading guys and changing lives. And so for me as a physician, that was really important. I'm like, well, listen, I can sit with the ladies and we can laugh and gossip, but they're not doing it. <laughs> when I talk to the guys, they make the changes. They make the shifts and, you know, we see some results. And then I also found with women, particularly in the space of sexual health, some, some women are going to be mad at me for this, but they get, so it, we, we get married and then have the kids and really kind of sink in this place of like, well, you know, I could live without it or I could live with it. So, so basically move into this, this just area of contentment. Yeah. That, you know what? Yeah. Fine. If I, if, if it happens, not, not if it doesn't. And then, then you have men who are like, hold up, this, this sex every once, every two, three weeks, once a month, stuff, this, this ain't, this ain't how it's rolling. That's and right. so now you got friction. That's right. And, and then you're in a tough space because they're married. And it's not fair because you guys did make a commitment to each other. Listen, we was we we're supposed to be here. We're supposed to have sex. This is to death to a part. So you mean I'm gonna we're gonna die? Here we are. We're only 55. Does this mean that I'm only gonna have sex twice a year for the rest of my life? Man, like, as, what? As the old phrase going. You better keep doing what you did to get them. That's uh, right. so so when so when you so when you confront that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and are you seeing that a lot? Oh, I see that all the time. I see that all the time in our community, unfortunately. I don't see it as much in other communities because it becomes kind of an agreement and a negotiation in other communities. In our community, I think our mothers 
uh, you know, watching my mom, watching my aunts have kind of led us to this place where we think that, you know, once you got the kids and all that, it, it, we, we, you know, that's a, that's a thing of the past. And so it becomes difficult for me as a sexologist and as a physician to, when, when couples come or when women come, particularly African-American women, when they say they want to get their sex drive back up, a lot of times that's not true. A lot of times it's just to make the partner happy uh, to say, okay, well, I'm trying. You know, I'm going to get the tests. I'm trying to do these things. But it has to be, you know, a joint effort because it's really not fair. Here it is. I'm helping the guy get his erection stronger, and he's got a Maserati in the car and no keys because he can't try it out. <laughs> so it's <laughs> tough, you know? <laughs> and if he can't Yo. test drive at home, he's going to test drive somewhere. He's going to test drive somewhere. That's my point. You know, with Facebook and, and everything, it's just so easy to meet people online and here and there. And then I find that there's so much, okay, so he's, he said, listen, honey, you know, we really don't have sex much. You know, it really makes me feel terrible. Right. You know, I feel really attractive. You know, people look at me when I'm at the grocery store. Women and flirt. And, he, and he's trying to avoid a confrontation. Yeah. So he's trying to do it in a way of not to, he, not, not to cause drama. Yes. And eight times out of ten, she just doesn't hear it. And so it creates a bad situation. So I have guys come to me, well, well Dr. Rachel, what should I do? I'm like, well, I can't tell you to leave somebody. But then, but then, <laughs> but, 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 does it, but this also, but, but, but does this also then happen? Because yeah. for that, for that, for that man who says that, um, he may not have any issues um, in the bed, but now it becomes a psychological thing. Sure. And so now, when it does happen, he may not be able to perform because, hell, it's been three weeks. That's right. Three months. Three years. Right. You're right. You're absolutely right. There's so many layers to it. And, and you know, so, so back up. I don't want to be so hard on the ladies because, you know, gentlemen, you know, started out going on dates, doing a little romance, and maybe have stopped or fallen off a little bit. But what I will say is that when you make that commitment to somebody that this is, this is for a lifetime, that you really do have to listen to them when they come to you and say, right. listen, I need sex because they're not saying I need sex because, um, you know, I'm just a freak. They're saying I need sex because I need to feel attractive. Right. I need to feel intimacy. I need to feel like you care about me and you find me attractive because if not, then it reflects on how I see right. myself and how I have to perform when I go into corporate America right. or go into the job and everybody's treating me like shit there. You know? You, you, you said something that cracked me. I was watching, I saw one of your videos. It was on YouTube and Instagram and I, I, I holla laugh. I think I texted you on it. And you said, listen, your body parts as a man or a woman, they are the same if you don't use your arm. Your arm will atrophy. Yes. Your arm will stop working if you don't use your arm. That's right. You said men and women, same thing same. for your sexual organs. Same And I, the comments were hilarious because <laughs> folk will, people were shocked by that because they never, ever put those two together. Yeah. No, it, it's true. And so, it, you know, that old saying, if you don't use it, you will lose it, it's really the same. So there has to be blood flow and there has to be engorgement in both female genitalia and male genitalia. Okay, so now you get to the science. Yes. Now you get to the science of it. Yes. Uh, and, because, and that's the other thing. Unlike, there's a bunch of people out there who are doing videos and stuff, but your deal is, you're not trying to be, this ain't no voyeuristic stuff. You're trying to walk people through the science of the human body. That's right. This is what arouses a woman. Yes. This is what arouses a man. And these are the things that actually can inhibit that from happening. That's when you That's talk right. about high cholesterol, things along those lines. Yes, 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 yes. Because, because the same blood vessels that have to go to our genitalia actually go to our heart, go to our kidneys, go to our eyes. So if you're in a health compromised situation, it makes sense then that you start to lose your erection. You start to, as women, you start to not get as lubricated. You start to not feel or want sex. So sex, when your sex drive kind of plummets or things aren't going well down there, it is a sign that something else needs to be looked at. So when we think about engorgement and blood flow to these areas, as a gentleman, you know, when you're in your prime, you go to sleep, you know, at night, your erection's exercising itself. It's having <laughs> nocturnal erections, four or five a night. 
right? And then as you start to age, what happens to those blood vessels is the blood vessels start to get diseased, and that's basic. Every, every 10 years, our blood vessels start to work a little less like they should, create less nitric oxide, and so at night, what happens is you start to get less of those nighttime erections. And so what happens is, because the penile tissue isn't getting all that blood flow, it actually starts to get what we call fibrosis. It actually starts to stiffen up. So the, the key in exercising your genitalia is that if you exercise, even, even through self-play with women or self-play with gentlemen, what you're actually doing is you're encouraging blood flow to some area that you're just sitting on all damn day. So, right? if, so if it's not being used, it's not getting it's blood not flow. Getting blood and flow. so your deal is, no, it actually needs to get blood flow. I mean, exactly. the, 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 reason, the reason, reason I understand, look, I play golf. Yes. And, and when I warm up playing golf, mm -hmm. uh, I, have a, uh, I have one of the uh, high-priced massagers, mm -hmm. and I also have mm -hmm. uh, stretch bands. Yes. And um, when, uh, so I, I was warming up, uh, and a guy was like, man, what are you doing? I said, one, I'm getting blood flow to my shoulders. That's right. So I said, I can't, in order for me to have proper rotation playing golf, yeah. I said, I need to get blood flow to my shoulders yeah. when I'm stretching uh, my hip flexors. I'm trying to get blood flow there, and I'm actually warming the areas up. Yeah. So then when that happens is, now I'm, now I'm loose, and so now I'm not, now I'm not stiff when I'm playing. And they were like, okay. And I said, that's what, I said, that's what you do when you warm up. That's right. So that's what, literally what you're saying is, look, literally. if the absence of blood flow, yes. it ain't gonna, you're gonna have trouble playing golf, you're gonna have trouble in the bedroom. That's right, that's right. And then what happens too is we don't understand the aging process. We don't, you know, when you're a kid, you know, someone could just brush up against you and as a gentleman, you get, <laughs> you get one, right? And in and, 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 and ladies, you know, you can be dancing with someone and just a little, pressure down there. You're like, ah, ah, ah. But as time goes by for everybody, it just takes a little more. So oftentimes, too, guys will think they have an erection issue, and really what they have is uh, you guys are together, and you used to be just wham, bam, good night. Now we need a little bit more foreplay, and you need both people involved. So when you go outside to start your car engine, it takes a little longer to warm your car <laughs> engine up. It does. It does. It <laughs> but does. when it's a new car, crank, all right, we can take off. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so the goal then is to prevent people from needing to get a new car every time they want to get turned on. Instead, we want to make it so that they can get turned on with their same old car, you know? <laughs> so, so you, so you, I, I there was something, uh, and this is, this is so hilarious. So after seeing your video, every time I look at mouthwash on my counter. Oh, yes. I think of you every time. Oh, good. And I, I was, because I was, I, I was, it was a trip. I had never heard somebody say, yeah. I'd never heard somebody say, don't use mouthwash because it impacts nitric oxide. Yes. Explain that. So perfect. I'm so glad you brought this up. So we have two ways we produce nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide is what we need to expand blood vessels. Listen, I can take someone off of mouthwash and actually lower their blood pressure. So, so let, me, let me talk to you about how right. important nitric oxide is. So nitric oxide is something that's created in our blood vessels that helps us relax the blood vessels so blood flow can flow through it, right? When blood vessels are tight like that, blood pressure is up and blood flow is down. So what happens with mouthwash, mouthwash wipes out one of our body's ways of producing nitric oxide. Because if you notice, as I said, as we age, our ability to produce nitric oxide in those blood vessels goes down. So we have one other way that we make nitric oxide that we can control, and that's through our diet. So that's taking nitrates in through our mouth, and then we need the bacteria in there to convert those nitrates in our diet to nitrates. So, then so the, we swallow it. So the bacteria in, in our, our mouth, mouth is a super important part of it. So if you so have, people are thinking I'm just I'm just swiveling mouthwash and I want fresh bread. Yes. But, you, but you're saying you're killing the bacteria. You are killing the bacteria. And that bacteria that you in your mouth. Now you ain't saying don't brush your teeth. Right. But what you're saying is that whatever the ingredients in mouthwash, that's killing the bacteria in your mouth. 
on which the back now, of the tongue. Which now is impacting the nitric oxide that's in your body, which can impact your sexual health? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So there's a, a few things that we as a people do that is wiping out nitric oxide, and mouthwash is one of them, because the mouthwash sits in the back of the mouth, kills off that bacteria that is 100% necessary to, to convert the nitrate in our diet to nitrites to then go down and create more nitric oxide. And the cool thing about that pathway of making nitric oxide is that we can control it. You can put more nitrates in your diet. You can eat more spinach. You can eat more arugula. You can eat more celery, um, or you can take a nitrate-rich uh, nit nitrate supplement. And, but all of that, we do need that bacteria in order to convert the diet into nitric oxide. So you said you said they're, not, they're nitric oxide supplements. We'll get to that in a second. Yes. But how, how do we create, how do we increase our nitric oxide with food, with different foods, and what foods does that? Sure. So we got to be careful because a lot of the foods that will increase nitric oxide, for those of people who have uh, arthritis or kidney disease, they have something called oxalates in them. So that spinach, spinach is great. It's full of nitrates. It's full of magnesium, all the stuff we need to make healthy blood vessels. But the only thing about spinach is that it is high in oxalates. Mm -hmm. Something like arugula, something like celery, those are fantastic because they're nitrate rich rich and they don't have those oxalates in them mm -hmm. that are going to interfere. Uh, beets, beet, beets are really great for introducing nitrates into our diet. Okay. So, so for instance, I've written the, uh, the smoothie recipe book, E-Function Smoothie Recipe Books, and everybody's like, well, wait a minute. How are you curing hypertension? How are you helping everybody with their erections just with smoothies? Right. Well, because the smoothies are rich with nitrate, rich in ingredients, right. and magnesium. So magnesium you have, and you have nitrate. Two books, right? You have two? Yeah. All right, so let me see, let me see this. All right, so first of all, yeah. uh, so first, let's, let's do this here. Before I talk about the smoothies, yeah. okay, so you watch all of these commercials. Yes. And they've got his, they got Cialis, uh, Viagra, uh, and again, and you like go crazy with all of these pills yeah. because you say, you say, look, that's only gonna help you for a little bit, then it's actually gonna cause you problems because you got side effects, things along those lines. And all the commercials, they talk about ED, erectile dysfunction. And when we were talking, you said you purposely don't want to use that phrase That's because right. when men hear it, it's a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. So you say you use E function. Exactly. Erectile function, not erectile dysfunction. I don't talk about ED because it's not a dysfunction. This is a natural process. You're going to have great days with your erections. Some days you're not going to have really great days. But what we want to do is increase blood flow, heal blood vessels, support your prostate so that you can do what your body naturally does. And so those commercials drive me bananas mm -hmm. because I'll tell you the main space reason I got into this natural space with erectile health is because because in our clinic in Gary, Indiana, my mom and I, we used to hand out Viagra and Cialis. We would keep drawers full of it, closets. Some, of, some people watching right now is like, I remember that. Dr. Rachel used to always give me the samples. And so I'm thinking, I'm helping brothers out. You know, they don't have to pay for this stuff. But those same guys that we were, uh, you know, that come in every week, getting the samples, you know, they would come in. They were having strokes. You know, we went from the Cadillac, headed out to Vegas, to stroke. I'm on a, in a wheelchair. I'm, and, and I'm telling you, this was happening time and time again. And so my mom and I sat down one day. I was like, gee, have you noticed that uh, a lot of our patients, the guys that, you know, are just so sharp and clean, um, you know, like my favorite guys, they're, they're having these strokes. She's like, yeah. She's like, I think it's that medication. You know, you know mm. moms are, I think it's that medication. And so behind diseased blood vessels to the erection are diseased blood vessels to the heart, to the kidneys, and mm. to everything else. So I'm not saying that the medication is causing that because that could get me arrested and targeted and all other things. But I am saying that we do not need to rely on those medications. What you have to do is fix the root cause. Right. They, they have you log in, you see a doctor, and 15 minutes later, they're shipping you some of right. that stuff. It's chewable. It's in honey. It's this, it's that. It's killing us, and we need to get off of it. And so my thing is... I want to teach guys how to uh, fix the problem, support the prostate, mm -hmm. fix the problem, so that you don't have to rely on those things. Um, at, at all right, y'all. So, so, so I'm about to. Uh, so <laughs> just, again, so I'm just letting y'all know right now. So if y'all got some kids in the room, y'all don't want the kids to hear some of this stuff. Uh, y'all just might want to go ahead and uh, tell the kids. I need y'all to leave the room right now. So, so in your smoothie, in your e-function uh, smoothie <laughs> recipes. 
We've got the uh, morning wood smoothie. <laughs> okay. Those ingredients are a quarter cup blueberries, fresh. Half one to two cups of kale, collard greens, or spinach chopped and frozen. Yes. A quarter cup fresh beets chopped, a half a cup of ice, one cup of almond milk or coconut water, fresh squeezed orange juice if non diabetic, four to six macadamia nuts, a quarter of a lemon squeeze. So then we go to the black of the berry stiffness smoothie. <laughs> well, and let me just say, too, that all the ingredients in the smoothie recipes are clinically proven ingredients that help with support erectile function. And, which, so and, people and, ask and me you're all putting the time, all of them together yes, in different combinations in different smoothies. That's correct. And okay. people ask me all the time, Doc, why are there no strawberries in there? Well, we don't see any clinical evidence that strawberries support erectile health. Really? So, yeah. so I see in here... Darker blue, things. Blueberries, Darker berries. raspberries... Yes, um, black, blackberries. blackberries. Okay. Yes. So you got the glory smoothie. Yes. Okay. The... <laughs> All right. We've got the optimizer libido smoothie. That's right. That's okay. right. All right. The ginger vitality smoothie. Yes. Diabetic friendly. Yes. 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 All right. Um, we have the stand up tall smoothie. That's right. That's okay. Right. All right. Here. Uh, this is probably the most popular one um, in uh, the book, because I see it was, it was bookmarked here. Uh, it was the page, it was bookmarked. This is called the Dick Up Smoothie. The Dick Up Smoothie, listen. The so, Dick Up Smoothie so is the cups, most popular. So that's two cups watermelon <laughs> chopped and seed removed. If allergic, use peeled and sliced cucumber instead. Half of a beet scrubbed and chopped. A, a half frozen and sliced banana. Half cup ice, four to eight basil leaves a quarter cup raspberries, half of a lemon, one teaspoon ground organic chia seeds. If substituting cucumber for watermelon, add one or two teaspoons of honey. Okay. Yes. All right. Why is this one the most popular one? Well, you know, it's probably the most popular one because I, I put it on YouTube and people have been using you it. You did a whole and, video, and they, and you call yes, a video. Yes, and they, and they write their testimonials on there and they're like, damn, doc, first day, you know. So. Uh, honestly, that one is so popular and you, because and it you really... And you have people who literally have, written, have, have oh. posted comments saying, yo... We have thousands, thousands of testimonials around the world on how the smoothies have changed their erectile okay, no, health. Okay, now, when are you, right? now, now you're saying here, when are you supposed to do the smoothie? Once a day, twice a day? You are actually supposed to use it as your, your when you're breaking your fast in the morning, you're supposed to use it as your morning meal replacement. So, so let's say if you're doing a protein shake or, or, or a green smoothie, what, what you're saying is uh, when you get up, this, make yes. this your first meal. That yes. First. And, and I tell uh, my guys, really, you know, I'm a fan of intermittent fasting. You Got know, it. That's another conversation for another day. And so to push that first meal out as late as possible and to start the meal with, a, with one of the smoothie recipes. All right. So but what you do... But do the smoothies only once a day or twice yeah, a day? Yeah, they do them once a day, once a day. So you'll make one, and actually, for some gentlemen, it lasts for two meals. It might be their break, their, the breakfast and right. the lunch. Because it's and actually, then, it's act, when, with, with these ingredients, it's, it, it fills up about 24, about 24, yeah, it about does. 28 ounces. It does. Right. So it ends up kind of being two right. servings. So I, I try to tell y'all, so I, so yeah. doc, doc sent me, I was like, all right, doc, you tripping, all right, so, okay. So she sent me the book, and I'm going to, and I'm cracking up laughing at these, at the smoothies, y'all, because you have the Green God smoothie, <laughs> the Stiffening Stamina smoothie, the Daily Boost smoothie. We got the Mandingo. The Stimulating Power <laughs> uh, smoothie. Because We've got the Mandingo smoothie. And see, these perfect for you because you don't like vegetables. The power to please smoothie. <laughs> the nitrate knockout smoothie. That um, one's super the, full of nitrates. The ever ready smoothie. Yes. Um, and then we have the staying power smoothie. That's right. That's and right. And so and you cite, you got all the citations here. Yeah. Uh, and so you, so you spent this time literally looking at all the different combinations and say, okay, here's how we put together this Right smoothie. And trying them. So, you know, when you're practicing out in Los Angeles, you know it's a different environment. Right. You know, smoothies right. and diets. And the smoothies and this do and work. That. Yeah. I'm just letting y'all know. Because I, <laughs> I had to explain it. I had to explain it, Doc. She's like, this is one serving. I was like, Doc, this is not one serving. I'm like, this is a big ass serving. I'm like, this is like 28 ounces. I said, Doc, that's about three damn servings. But go ahead. <laughs> well, you're a small eater. You <laughs> know? No, but I was like, 
big ass blended, blended all together. I'm like, hold up, 10 inch, 12 ounce cup, 12 <laughs> ounce cup. I'm like, nah, this ain't one damn smoothie. The, the, the best are the guys who are sharing it with their, their wives and you know, they're like, we both feel much all better. All right, so, so yeah. men and women can do this. Oh, for sure, for okay. sure. Because remember, the genitalia and the science in, in all of our bodies are pretty much the same. Just women have more estrogen, guys have more testosterone, what we're all supposed to, and that's the main difference. But actually, embryologically, you know, every Everything starts out with, everybody starts out with the same genitalia. What happens in the womb is the mom gets more testosterone going and the genitalia becomes a boy's oh, genitalia. But, yeah, but, so but, it's, but, it's all but, but none of your titles are same. targeting women. No, though. no, no, you no, know, no. You mean you don't, ha you don't have, you know. <laughs> women uh, don't want their stuff to work the same way, guys. You don't have the amazing VJJ <laughs> smoothie. You ain't got. It's you coming, though. Oh, it's, okay, coming. Right. it's coming. It's right, coming. So, so you did, you did, yeah. two, you, you did two books of smoothies? Yes. Yeah, so you, no, no, that's, that's the original one. That's that's the original. That, that's volume two, actually, because okay. what I did in volume two is I talk about the science behind why it works and it. why the ingredients are special. Because honestly, you know, you get to the point where you're like, okay, I'm smoothied out, doc. I just want to know what I'm supposed to eat when I go out or what should I buy at the grocery store. Got it. So it's really kind of too designed to train you into what you should be eating to keep your erections right. healthy. And the best part about it is you keep your erection healthy, the rest of you is healthy too. And again, for the people like, yeah, like I said, who like me, who, who hate vegetables. Yes, So yes. this is a way, I remember when J.J. Smith, when she, when she did her green smoothie oh, book, yes. she came on, she was like, Rolo, this, I said, baby, this is the only way I'm gonna eat all them vegetables. That's I can't stand kale, spinach, all this sort of stuff. I said, but fine, throw, throw some pineapple and something else yeah. in that bad boy. Find the raspberries and the beet. I said, fine, we'll go ahead and mix it up. I said, but I can't eat them then with vegetables like that. That's All the right. best way. So we were talking about nitric oxide, yeah. and then you were talking about how you do it naturally. Mm -hmm. But you also created your own line of products. That's a, that a, that's a part of your, like, so what's the, your institute? What's the actual yeah. name of it? So the Dr. Rachel Institute, and really, um, so the Dr. Rachel Institute kind of started in the space of training sex experts and sexologists. And now we've kind of evolved into the space of, you know, educating people on right. sex sexual health, providing sexual health programs for gentlemen particularly, so that we can look at the root cause, mm -hmm. help you come with a, a program and a strategy to kind of fix the root cause to get your erectile health back. And for uh, brothers in general, you know, like I said, I was on the airplane the other day coming out, yesterday coming out here, and I look and I see brothers, you know, it's, a, it's an hour and 15 minute flight, and three guys gets up, you know, these are gentlemen over the age of 45, three of them got up rushing back to the bathroom. And it hurts, because I know that's their prostate. I mm. know it needs to be, you know, addressed. And so, you know, of course I can't be like, hey, I'm Dr. Rachel, and I think you have prostate issues, <laughs> but I want to get the information out there, you know? It, it hurts to see, so I actually wrote the prostate revolution, okay. which I think that all men need to read right. because it really talks about how the, the prostate, prostate is revolution, central. the underground guide to flow strong, curb the urge to go and sleep through the night. Yeah. Okay. Be because see the prostate, and we don't talk about this either. The prostate sits at the base of the erection. Right. So as your prostate starts to grow and enlarge, right. it's stealing blood flow from your erection, and so it becomes one of the reasons why the erection after 45 starts to be like, well, what's happening? Well, mm -hmm. yeah, we got blood flow, but we got the prostate enlarged, mm -hmm. and so prostate symptoms are getting getting up in the middle of the night a bunch of times. So if you're getting up in the middle of the night, that's when testosterone is supposed to be produced. Uh -huh. You're not sleeping through the night. You're not healing, your body isn't doing what it needs to do because you got to get up and pee mm -hmm. a couple times. So that's a problem. Rush into the bathroom. So what's okay? So what so what's yeah. normal? If you if you, if you what is it once in the middle of the night you, or what what's Technically ideally you should not wake up in the middle of the night to have to go pee because Listen, God, God wants you to sleep all the way through those REM right. cycles because during the deepest state of REM, that's when your testosterone is being produced. So if you have to get up right before you, break, you get there, that. then you break the cycle. Now, you don't is get a it, now, now does that also uh, does it also mean, you know, watching how late we eat, how late we drink as well? So you're not, so you're not, you know, knocking out. You know, uh, a eight, 16, 18 ounce bottle of water, yeah. uh, and you go to bed in about 30 minutes. Well, he here's the thing. I think what we do is we dehydrate ourselves because we are not drinking water around Throughout trying the day. to keep the 
trying, okay. to, trying not to rush. You know, so you'll see guys, they, they map out where the bathroom is. They're not drinking enough water during the day because they don't want to have to keep rushing. Got it. So at five, they stop drinking water. And really, all you're doing is dehydrating Got yourself it. because you're trying to support that lifestyle. So now it's about midnight, 1, 12, 30, and you thirst is all get out. Yeah. And then you drink that 16.9 ounce bottle of water. You gonna get up and use the bathroom. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right. And and so technically, you really shouldn't have to get up until like five or six when it's time to get up. Right. So you know, my goal is I want you to get up when it's time to, when you want to go. Right. When you want when it's time to go. Like let's get it on instead of because you have to go. Got it. And so really, that's that's the impetus behind. Um, the Prostate Plus formula, okay. which is a formula designed to support healthy prostate flow. And it's different from a lot of supplements designed mm -hmm. for prostate health because it also focuses on bladder health. Mm -hmm. um, it has a, a component called Urox in it, which is a botanical blend that's designed to kind of help take the inflammation and the sting out of mm -hmm. the bladder. Because what happens is as that prostate is growing, it's pushing on the urethra and it's making, making pee sit in the bladder, which is why you have to keep rushing so much. And so what happens then is as that urine sits in the bladder, if you can imagine if you've ever, you know, when you're a kid, you pee on yourself and all of a sudden your leg is stinging, everything's stinging. So if, blad if, if pee sits too long in the bladder, the bladder actually starts to get a tonic or weak and inflamed. And so that is what propels you to have to keep rushing to the bathroom. I mean, guys are put in there uncles, their dads on it, and writing me letters like, Doc, thank you so much for, for making this. And, and honestly, with supplements, it is against the law for me to have a supplement that works better than a medication. It's just, you're just not supposed to do it. They'll shut which, you which down. Which is crazy. The FDA does not want you to be on vitamins, nothing like that. You have to be on a medication. So I have to be very careful about what I say. And, you know, I've got all these testimonials, and they're like, let's put this out there, Dr. Rachel. Let's put this on social media. I'm like, do not put that on there. Because I do not want a target on my head. I've been there. Um, so, yeah. So, it, it's, it's been this amazing journey because watching my dad with the prostate thing, mm -hmm. prostate thing is, has become my thing. And so, what I do is anyone who buys the su supplement from me, you know, they get the prostate revolution free. All they have to so do we got, is so ask you got, for it. So, you got the prostate supplement. Let me yeah. see that. And then, if oh, we had the prostate supplement. I brought you this. Your prostate supplement. Yeah. Then you have... You have the nitric oxide. Yes. You have that. Sure, sure. So now the nitric oxide um, that I recommend is not formulated by me. Um, but we have nitric oxide test strips because the, the thing is you use a test strip to test your saliva right. to kind of see where your nitrate levels are. Um, the so like, so on those strips there, yeah. you have uh, light pink to almost white, which That's means right. you, you, you ain't got much depleted. nitric oxide in your body. Your reserves And then you there. have, like, it's the, it's, the, it's the color of your jacket. Yes, it lights up there. you got strong nitric oxide. Absolutely. And, and so... Technically, after you eat a nitrate-rich meal or you drink a smoothie recipe, you should be able to test and be like, oh, I'm depleted. And then after your meal that's nitrate-rich, you should be able to test and be like, oh, okay, my nitrite, my nitrate levels are up. I'm making more nitric oxide. Oh, and I think you said... I think you said you typically 90 days or so in taking the nitric oxide pills. Mm -hmm. Because you're like, look, it ain't like, the, the, your point is this ain't like you're popping Viagra. Exactly. It ain't like, oh, let me pop in too, I'm getting into bed. No, you, this is a regimen that you're building up. No, that's right. And then keep in mind, there's a lot of things that we're doing on a daily basis that's depleting nitric oxide. The number one over-the-counter medication that people take every day, got a little heartburn, I'm gonna take some Prilosec, right? Protonics, what have you. That depletes nitric oxide. So mm. there, there's so many medications, blood pressure medications that are actually depleting our levels of nitric oxide that once I got into the space where I started researching nitric oxide, I'm like, damn, our, our diuretics, you know, all of these things that mm -hmm. traditionally are the first line things that we put um, mm -hmm. our people on are depleting nitric oxide. Wow. So if you don't support your nitric oxide, then what happens is our blood vessels calcify, they become hardened, they're not delivering blood flow the way that we, they need to, and it, it's, it's a whole thing. So even, even, um, even a leave, ibuprofen, all of that actually depletes mm. nitric oxide. Wow. So you have to be very mindful about the, the extra things that are happening when we take stuff that we just think is just one of them. What are the other two books? Yeah. Oh, the other one. From No Sex to Great Sex in Seven Days or Less. This is for my sexless couples who've just kind of gotten into the, the, the space of, eh, 
we don't really have it much, and now that we haven't had it in a while, I don't even know where to start, right? Okay. So this is right. this is for them, and, that? and this one's that? for our, we... our singles. Sexpert Secrets Playbook, Become a Sex Champ Overnight. <laughs> Become a Sex Champ Overnight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, this, so you, t okay, so, yeah. so, so again, so then you do a video, and you're yeah. talking about prostate massages. Yes. And so, I'm, so uh, I'm seeing your video, and then you were explaining it. So then you start talking. This is where I really, I was like, I know you they, probably. And he turned I, off. I'm like, you know you freak, freak some dudes out. <laughs> yeah. They were like, what the hell? Because then you start talking about prostate massaging tools. And so yeah. I'm sure you got guys who are thinking, uh-uh, well, you don't come near me with that. Sure. Okay, so, so, so explain the science behind, behind massaging the prostate yeah. and the role that it plays in sex. Sure, so I want you to think about this too. Like when your back hurts, you got a knot in your back, you're just like, damn, babe, can you come massage this for me? Can that's you just get this knot damn, out? That's why I, got, I get that massage. Exactly. It stays in my backpack. I travel, so when I got, when, if I'm on a flight from east to west, I'm not sitting on five hours. I'm like, no, we gonna massage we gonna the calves, thighs, uh, all it over. It is, yeah, so it doesn't tighten up. And in, in ancient Chinese cultures, prostate massage was really just part of it. As a matter of fact, physicians back in the day, that used to be what we would do. If, a, if a, a person came in, this was before my time, but if a guy came in and it was clear he had some prostate issues, the physician would actually go in and massage the prostate. And because the, the prostate is kind of a spongy material. So you've got ejaculate that goes through it, you've got toxins that go through it. And so the concept behind prostate prostate massage is that this stuff is sitting there and it just sits there and bogs down the prostate. So one of the first times I tried prostate massage on a gentleman, so I'm reading these ancient Chinese texts and talking to some colleagues and they're like, yeah, you know, prostate massage, you know, helps me keep people off medication. I'm like, well, wait, wait, what? So I start experimenting with it. And so I have a patient who comes in, he had ED, he had an, an enlarged prostate. And so I'd gotten a, a prostate machine from China, right? Cause it's a big thing there. They've wow. got all types of devices. The, the doctors just use them. They actually have clinics. You can go in and get one. Um, and so I, I get this device, and I'm like, you know, today we're going to try prostate massage. I, I tell him the science behind it. But he, and was he like? He was, like, but he was hell? open to it. Okay. Like, this was, this I mean, was first California. First of all, you already said, <laughs> yeah. he got ED, he got enlarged prostate. He's he open. Multiple, he, he was like, all right, <laughs> look, let's go. Hey, 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 dog, work your magic. Make, do so. All right, all right, cool. I trust you. Definitely. You know, he had a numbness. He couldn't feel anything. I was like, Oh, hell yeah. He was like, yeah. Doc, let it rip. Listen, the next day, he sends me a text message. He's like, Doc, I haven't felt like this in years. And I say, God darn it. We're on to something with this. And with the science behind prostate massages, because if you, okay, so most guys, the brothers, do the external massage, right? So they don't want to actually go in and massage the prostate from in inside. But where the prostate sits, it, it, posterior to it is the anus, the rectum, right. right? And so there's such a thin membrane between the prostate and um, the, where, where stool is, is stored. And we actually kind of think that because stool sits right behind the prostate, some of that is going through that thin membrane and actually getting to the prostate. That might be why we have so much prostate cancer, prostate right. inflammation. So that becomes the number one way for you to get behind the prostate. But, but keep, keep this in mind, the prostate lateral on both sides of the prostate, we got the nerves that are going directly to the erection. So we've got blood flow that has to go th through and past the prostate. So if the prostate is enlarged and boggy, it is pressing on the nerves and the blood vessels that are actually supposed to be delivering nutrients and supply to our erection. So it makes sense that it, when your prostate starts to get in, uh, enlarged like that, it's an issue. So when you're doing a prostate massage, whether it's a perineal massage, you can actually take a tennis ball, sit on a tennis ball while you're at your desk on a, on a hard chair, not a soft chair like right. this, and just really kind of rotate back and forth on it. You're actually massaging the perineum, and in, in essence, you're actually massaging the prostate too. Okay. So there's Ways to do the prostate externally. You can do the prostate massage, um, you know, abdo through your abdom abdomen. You're just massaging the bladder, and it, the prostate sits beneath the bladder, so you're getting it that way. You can do it internally. But my thing is this. Your prostate is the air traffic control for erectile health.
and your prostate sits there and collects so much throughout the years that what a prostate massage is actually doing is it's encouraging drainage and lymph flow through it. So it actually has, a, you know, we, we have so many testimonials from guys who are just like, you know, they didn't necessarily buy a massager from me. They mm -hmm. tried it at home and they're like, doctor, I, for the first time, you know, I'm exploding like I used to, or I can actually get an erection again. So it actually helps those, both of those things because as you, if, if you don't realize that you have a pathway that goes through your prostate, that's your urethra. So, you know, urine has to travel through the prostate. But also what's, what well, you have a pathway of are called ejaculatory ducts. So in order to have that explosion at the end, you know, when you're a kid, you go, Pring! and it shoots everywhere. You know, as you start to, as you start to age, it might sludge or you, something, sometimes none comes out. So what happens too, is that that duct work, like the pathways, actually as that prostate grows, it starts to collapse on them. So what you're actually doing when you're doing a prostate prostate massager, you're supporting your prostate in a variety of ways, is you're actually kind of massaging it, almost like getting the, the, the gunk through the years that's been caught there. Wow. You've, you've seen it, it's on the sheets, you can't get it off, you know, so that same stuff is gunking up the prostate ducts. So yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a whole so thing. This, so this is a prostate massage. Yeah, so this was one of our external ones, and so what you're actually doing is you're actually putting it on that area halfway between where your um, where your 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 butthole is and where the testicles in that's typically where your prostate lies. So you're basically kind of turning it on and you're sitting on mm -hmm. it that, and that way. And that vibrates. This one vibrates. Gotcha. Yes. And the, the cool thing about this, you know, and so this, I, I call the external prostate. So this is not a, a yeah, this is not a, a spoon. Yeah, this, this is. This is not a spoon. <laughs> Just letting y'all know that's not a spoon. That's not a vibrator. That's not, that is a prostate massager. massager. And, well, the cool thing about the external ones is because you're not putting it in inside of you, right. it actually can double as a sex toy, you know, because you, you keep it clean and nice, you know, you can actually use this because when you're in the throes of passion, as time goes by, listen, having a helping hand, having a way to kind of help both parties out is, is great because vibration is one of the number one ways, so like, for instance, if we have a gentleman who is a paraplegic or is, is uh, paralyzed, you, you, everyone's wondering, well, how does that person actually get someone pregnant? Well, there's a reflex there. And what we actually do, for instance, if he's trying to extract some semen, right. we'll actually use vibration at the corona or the head of the penis to kind of get things going in that direction. We actually as a form for guys who are having trouble getting erections, you can actually use vibration at the head to, you, you just take the head and you kind of mash it on there to actually stimulate and bring an erection forth. This is really helpful for guys who don't want to do Viagra, but are having a really hard time getting one. They can actually use vibration. Um, they actually, you know, they make devices, they make sleeves that you can actually put on the corona and send the vibration frequency. It helps stimulate the nerves mm -hmm. because as time goes by in both men and women, there's a decrease in sensitivity. And so sometimes what you need is a rejuvenation of the nerves. Right. That's a lot of times, particularly with our diet diabetics and pre-diabetics is that there's nerve damage down there. And so one of the things that the prostate massage does is kind of helps rejuvenate and regenerate nerve tissue too. So, all right, so this, this is gonna be the final one. You didn't bring it with you. This is gonna Which be the one? final one. Uh, and, uh, and the reason, so I'm seeing your video, you're talking about this here, and I'm cracking up laughing because oh. anybody who watched <laughs> the Austin Powers movies, yeah. When you've seen, so you've seen these movies where yes. people have made fun of penis pumps. Yes. And so I'm, so you see all the jokes. And so I'm sitting here watching, and you're like, no, I got my own line coming out. And you walk, yeah. and you're explaining this. And, and, and again, and I, I keep telling y'all, listen, yeah. I, we, I've been talking to Doc for years yes. Uh, yes. and yes. How, how to do media <laughs> stuff, whatever. And I was like, and I literally said, Doc. Like, please, this, please don't. This really worked. <laughs> because, uh, again, yeah. because what you see in popular culture, you see the jokes being made, and you were like, no, yeah. this actually works. Yes. Okay. So explain. So, yeah. you, so you hear people, you see people talk about penis pumps, okay? Yes. You say this 
worse. Oh, definitely. How? Definitely. And I think people have the idea that a penis pump is for, you know, for you pump it up right before and then go have sex, right? But actually, what I speak about is using the pump as a regenerative strategy for the erectile tissue. Because remember, when you go to bed at night, your body's supposed to get about five erections. And once those stop, the tissue starts to atrophy, it starts to calcify, and you can't get those hard erections anymore. And you also, well, because of the yeah. men that you've been treating, mm -hmm. so the, in, the men who've had prostate, who's had prostate cancer, sure. who, who come from that, your deal is, you're basically, I, I, I mean, Listen to you talk about um, talk about uh, uh, the, the, the prostate st stimulating. We talk about you're really, for lack of a better phrase, this is sex training. Yeah. This is like if you're working for out. Sure. Because and so what? So when you're dealing with these guys, you're basically trying to get them back to where they were, and so all of these tools. Are frankly tools to help them get, help them rebuild yes. they rebuild their their sexual body rebuild rebuild their organs to be able to go back to life they, they they sort of used to have. Sure, and a lot of guys end up better than they were before, and, and even young guys are having trouble with ED right now. And then the problem happens is that if you're not getting those erections, if your erections don't get the exercise, now it's weak, and now you have to rebuild it. So if you're starting you, out in your see, thirty, you call it shrinkage. Oh yes, you said those things happen. Yes. Because again, if you don't use it. Yes. So when so 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 when you with your clients, how are you coaching them when it when it when it comes to the pump? Because yeah. you're and then also even that. What are you talking about here? Sure. Two, three times a day, once a day, how many times a week? Yeah. Because what you what you're laying out between mm -hmm. this and supplements, you're laying out a regimen. Yes, 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 yes. I'm I'm laying out a regimen. It's it's for people who really are invested in the process, who really want to get better, who really want to look up a year from now and be like, damn, I mean, I, I'm in better shape now than I was before. And really, honestly, if guys at home, if you go out and get a get a pump, you know, and really start pumping, and and for me, you know, we have different protocols depending on what's happening. Particularly, guys who have sickle cell shouldn't pump. Gentlemen who have any bleeding disorder shouldn't pump. And really, if you have a question, you know, ask your doctor. Doctors usually don't care if you pump; they just want to give you some Viagra, right? Right. So and so, and, and your deal is, I'm trying for you not to be yeah, on these medications. for sure, for sure, for sure. Because they have um, side effects. Yeah, they do have side effects. They have. Um, you know, you can go permanently blind. You can have hearing issues. You can have, you know, I got guys all the time. Doc, I have this really bad reflux every time I'm eating. Well, yeah, it's that Cialis you're taking every day. You know, so they do carry side effects. So honestly, when it comes to the pump, the pump is about the exercise regimen that comes from it. And honestly, it can help reverse the shrinkage. You know, and uh, I don't care if you're buying a $30 pump off of Amazon or if you're getting a 120 pump or a $200 pump. They all really have scientific data that starts in the space of rehabilitation. They started using pumps on guys who had their prostate removed. And what they found is that if you pump Immediately after the prostate is removed, you know, of course, after about a week or two of healing, what they do is you don't lose the size and you won't lose your erectile function as, as, as often if you have a gentleman who's pumping afterwards. And my thing is, a lot of these doctors send guys home with the pump, but they don't tell them that. They don't make it easy to use. It becomes this thing. You just throw it in the back of your closet. So any guy who has any erectile issues or even really wants to just plump up, I mean, a pump is the best, best thing for it. You have folks who they come with, they make jokes, they make fun, oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, and, and they, they go through all of this, and, and I'm sure when you're on your YouTube channel, when you're doing your videos and your Instagram posts, you're seeing that. Yeah. But you also are seeing real-life individuals who are hitting you up saying, Doc, you damn near saved my life. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And those emails and those messages come in by the droves every day, and it, and it helps keep me going. Because, like, like for instance, my friend uh, Lee, 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 Lee Daniels, he saw, he's like, Doc, why, why you got to talk about this stuff? Why you got to do it like that? There's so many other ways to do it. And I've always taken the lighter approach to things. I right. like cartoons. I like to make it fun. And I just really want to reach the people. Right. And well, first, you're not joking. Like well, here's all I mean, but yeah. you're, but one, you're not joking. Yeah. See, this ain't a joke. It's not a joke. Like when you're sitting there, you're like, listen, 
I'm walking you through. I'm giving you the information For because, sure. frankly, look, I can sit here and see comments, you know, in the chat room and folks are making jokes, whatever. But you're actually hearing from men who are scared to death, Man. who are freaking out, and they're they are screaming for help. Definitely. So this is, I mean, folk can crack jokes all they want to, but this is real for a whole lot of people who have completely lost sexual drive, energy, and they don't know what to do. For sure. I, I tell women all the time, I was like, imagine if you look in the mirror one day and all your hair had fallen out. You know, because we're really focused on our hair. Right. You know, our hair is our thing. I was like, that, that's how your guy feels when he wakes up and can't see his, his erection. I was like, so this is a whole thing. And what I find, too, is in our community, there's a lot, the guys will hide the, the, the treatment that they're going through because... She just doesn't want to have anything to do with them. And then meanwhile, I'll get these other guys from other communities like, oh, yeah, my wife's so supportive. She went out and bought me this today. And then in our community, someone's hiding in the closet doing it. Or, or she told me she wants nothing to do with it. And it, it, that, that hurts. I just wish we would support each other more and listen to each other and not necessarily put yourself in it. It's not about you. It's about him. And so I tell guys all the time, well, you know, when you're working on this part of your body, this is for you. Don't worry about her. This is for you. You get this sorted out, and then you figure out what's going to happen with y'all, because it, it, the future's not looking bright there. I mean, it, it, it is interesting. It, I think it goes to what has always been the case, mm -hmm. this fear in our community of, of not sharing information. Oh, we, yeah. we, we don't discuss those things. Sure. And folk have been walking around multi-generations having these issues. I mean, not even we're talking about, you know, not even talking about e-function, but, but just even when we don't talk about if we had breast cancer in our family. I remember talking to Deion Sanders when he, when he had the surgery, and then his mama told him, oh, yeah, your uncle had blood clots. He was like, uh, why in the hell nobody said anything? He's like, yes. I got a family history of blood clots. Mm -hmm. And so it's so many things that we don't talk about. Yep. And then there are problems, and so it's just, oh, don't say nothing. Yeah, but you got people who are 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years living with this, dying and passing away, and they never actually yeah. uh, experience uh, a great sex life or just a better life yeah. all those years they suffered silently. That's right. That's right. And it's 100% it's unnecessary. So if nothing else, I make videos and I make make it a, a, a come, come one, come all type of conversation because I want you to be able to have these conversations with your son, with your dad, with your uncle, with your wife, with your sister, so that we can kind of take an issue that is being swept under the rug and ignored and bring it out into the forefront. Because just like, you know, women suffer from fibroids and that's an assault on our sexuality, um, the, the prostate issue that's permeating through the, the, the male community is interfering with our sexuality too. Too. And if you, you know, it, I think at the end of the day, when we start and realize, you know, like, people don't want us here. You know, they don't like... <laughs> the most hated people in the world are black people, mm -hmm. right? So when you think about it like that and you realize that there's an assault on sexual health in mm -hmm. the community, just that alone should be a reason for you to start having these conversations with your kids, with your family, so that we can put plans in place to make sure that it doesn't help happen to us. And the prostate revolution, I mean, it goes into why we're having so many issues with our prostate, what you can do naturally to kind of heal. Because I'm, I'm a functional medicine provider now because um, Western medicine wasn't healing anybody. Mm -hmm. So now I focus on getting to the root cause, looking at the cellular level, and really trying to heal from within instead of just throwing a bunch of pills right. uh, your way. So, yeah. Where do folks go to get more info? Ah, head over to drrachelinstitute.com. Um, go over to my, U my YouTube D -R -R -A channel. D-R-R-A, got to spell it. D-R. R-A-C-H-A-E-L. There you go. Institute.com. Um, follow me on YouTube, Dr. Rachel, D-R-R-A-C-H-A-E-L. I'm trying to catch up with, uh, with you with all these followers. <laughs> Man, you guys should see the studio. Oh, wow. Wow. So, we're, and, and we're a few blocks from the White House. Yep, just Look two blocks. You. Just yeah, two blocks. Two blocks away. So, uh, thanks for having me. This has been I, awesome. I, I'm glad we finally had this conversation. <laughs> yes. And again, it's, it's all, look, everything for us is about information and yeah. So what drives me crazy is that 
a lot of this a lot of this stuff we're not discussing in our community. Yeah. And if it is being discussed, it's not being discussed by people who look like us. That's right. So being able for us to say, no, there are black folks who are in this space, who are, tr who are trying to help others, who are trying to prove their lives. So, if we're, so we're gonna have fitness folks on, we're gonna have dietitians yes. on, yes. we're gonna have all, we're gonna have psychologists and folks on. So we talk about mind, body, spirit. That's right. This is a part of mind, body, spirit. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Doc, appreciate it. All right, it's a pleasure. All right, folks, uh, that is it for us. We appreciate uh, all of you who have joined us uh, for today. Uh, don't forget, go to drrachelinstitute.com. That's R-A-C-H-A-E-L, uh, D-R-R-A-C-H-A-E-L, institute.com for more information. And so, again, she got books, she got supplements, she got prostate massages, she got penis pump. Doc got all kind of stuff, but I know she got some new products. I know you got something new coming up. Oh, well, you know, if you roll it, and you get 15%. So. All right, so, all right, so if y'all go to her institute, yeah. you type in R-O-L-A-N-D. Uh, don't misspell it. It ain't Ronald. It's R-O-L-A-N-D. <laughs> you get a 15% discount. Uh, and I can't wait to hear some of y'all uh, seeing her email saying, I saw you on Roland's show. Oh, Lord, I'm, uh, my stuff is really working right now. Because I see some of y'all chatting, y'all talking a bunch of trash. <laughs> but I know some of y'all going to be sending her, going to hit her website. You know Getting it. some information. So <laughs> don't, don't sit and act like y'all not going to do that. So we see what's going on. All right, folks, that is it for us. We appreciate everybody uh, checking us out. Uh, we, of course, uh, had a fantastic week. Uh, I want to thank again Mercedes-Benz. I was at the Masters Wednesday and Thursday, and so I want to thank uh, Erica Bolden, Monique Lars, and the whole team there. It was great seeing everyone there. Tomorrow, I'm actually moderating a panel for the National Medical Association uh, in, uh, here in D.C. Uh, at their conference talking about, of course, uh, tobacco. And as soon as I get done with that, I'm hopping on a plane. Monday, y'all, I'm going to be broadcasting from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Darius Rucker has his um, uh, Monday after the Masters uh, golf tournament. And so uh, I'm going down there to hang out with my homeboy, Darius Rucker. So we'll be from Myrtle Beach uh, on uh, Monday. And so hope you have a great weekend. Uh, don't forget, support us in what we do. Look, the information you get here, ain't nobody else doing this here, y'all. They're not having this conversation. Ebony's not doing, Essence is not doing, not the Grio, not Blavity, not Black Enterprise, not Urban One, not Rolling Out, none of these folks. You're only getting it here on Roland Martin Unfiltered and the Black Star Network. And so join our Brina Funk fan club. You can see your check and money order. P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 200-37-0196. Cash app, dollar sign, RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R. Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale, rolling at rollinsmartin.com. Rolling at rollinmartinunfiltered.com. Don't forget, you can also uh, get our Black Star Network app, Apple phone, Android phone, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV. Uh, you can also uh, get, uh, of course, uh, check out Black Star Network app. We're on four fast channels. Uh, we are on, of course, uh, Amazon News. You can go to Amazon Fire. You can check us out there. You can tell Alexa play news from the Black Star Network. You can also watch us on Plex TV, Amazon Freebie, Amazon Prime Video. And don't forget to get a copy of my book, White Fear, How the Browning of America is Making White Folks Lose Their Minds, available at bookstores nationwide. That's it. I'll see y'all on Monday. Holla!